Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Crochet Ridge Textured Hat. This is actually a hat and a combo but I'm only gonna focus on the hat today. So what we have here is Red Heart Heat Wave Yarn and let me just pull that up and show you. It's a beautiful, it's called Beach Ball. You only need one ball of yarn which will do the entire hat plus the pom pom. It's really not a hard hat to be able to follow and I'm gonna be doing it step by step and this brim is actually, I've already done some of the homework in advance, is a slip stitch brim which is one of the best brims that you can do in crochet. Has a lot of elasticity to it. Takes a little bit longer, well a lot longer to make. Um, I'm just being quite transparent here but I've always found that these hats that I do with this particular brim they last a lot longer and they also keep their elasticity a lot longer too. So the extra time that you'll spend working on the brim is something that you'll benefit with it in the long term. So without further ado we're gonna be using a five millimeter size H crochet hook and we're going to be starting to make the hat now. All the instructions are here and we're gonna go step by step in this tutorial today. So let's begin working on the brim. I've actually already started it. I have my 18 inches done and I'm going to be uh, picking up in the tutorial with this. But I'm gonna show you how this is done and again a five millimeter size H crochet hook. So this is a slip stitch on the back loop only and I'm gonna show you a technique and the way that I turn this so that you can identify the first one. There is no chaining one when you start any of these uh, rows going across and it keeps it nice and tight. So you wanna make sure that you're not separating any plies because it will be uh, noticed in that and I also keep a count. So I'm not gonna deny that I just sit here and just whistle Dixie. I am counting as I'm going along just to make sure that I keep on with my, my stitches. So let's uh, grab our yarn and let's get going. Leave an extra long tail that you can use to be able to um, use a tapestry needle at the end to hide that in. So you're going to chain a total of 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. So there's actually only gonna be 12 stitches across and that's achieved by starting out and you're gonna skip the first one and turn and get the back hump only and I want you just in the back hump you, you're going to slip stitch across. So you'll have to get used to slipping. So just slip and through. Provide a little bit of extra slack. Don't let it bunch up on you and you're just gonna slip your way all the way across. So by you doing the second chain from the hook you only have 12 stitches to go across and you're going to wanna keep an eye on the 12 because once you start eliminating stitches which is very possible, um, you know nobody's perfect, then it gets, you will see that result if you start adding or skipping stitches. If anything you'll start um, subtracting stitches is my educated guess. So you're going right back to the very beginning of the chain and you're going to single crochet. So what I wanna show you is the way that you're gonna turn. So this is the very last one. So before you turn to go in the opposite direction, it is easier to look at the first back loop only. So if you turn it, you got the back loop only. It's hard to see it from this point of view. So from my eyes, it's like this to you. So what I do is that I stop and we don't chain one and we're gonna slip stitch across. So once the last one is in, just going into the first back loop only. So if you turn it, that's the back loop. So just going into the back loop only and then just yarning over pulling it through. So that was one of 12. So slip through both of the strands and then go to the back loop of the, of the next. So I like to do the first stitch before I physically turn it around. So this is number two and three. Once you get more product in your hands it's easier to go across. I'm not gonna deny that as well. So it feels fiddly at first but once you get more in your hands it's a lot easier. Your goal is is not to separate any of the plies of this because you will see it. So if you start feeling like you're separating plies just pull out and reattempt. So your goal is is to get 12 all the way across. Where you're going to start skipping stitches is the stitch right before the end of a row. And I'm gonna demonstrate that for you in just a moment because that's where I would have skipped stitches because I was skipping stitches uh, doing my sample. So I love these brims. They take longer to make but they are, they are worth every uh, penny of it really, every, every stitch. So you're gonna come into the last one and it's right in the end and you pull through and through. So before you turn, start the next row. So just dive right into the back loop only because you can see it. Okay, make sure you get all the plies and then pull through. So let's count these out so it should be 12. So one and the back loop only is two 
and three and I'm gonna get close to the end here and I'll pick you up there in just a moment. When you get all the way to the end you have two stitches left but when it's like this it looks like there's just one. The next stitch is right in before this. Do You see it? It's right buried in there. That's where you're gonna skip a stitch. So this is my 11th stitch and then the outside one here is the 12th. Okay, so make sure you get both of those. And if anywhere you're gonna skip a stitch will be the 11th one. So then again just start another row. So just get the first back loop only then turn. It's just easier to do that and then keep on going. I'm going much slower here than I would in person. Um, it's just once you get more in your hand and you get comfortable it's really quite easy and I do count. So uh, my tip for you if I was to do this is that when you get to about halfway you should be at six and then seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So sometimes if I know that I skipped a stitch that I get more than halfway and then I realize that's six then I know something's wrong. So then I just kind of frog out and just correct it. And so it's nice to produce a tutorial where everything is perfect but the reality is that life isn't perfect. So to leave these kind of tips makes sense. So you wanna keep going back and forth until you get a total of 18 inches and that is the total length of it. So by just paying attention to the stitches it will be really quite lovely. So lay it down, use your tape measure and you should have 18 inches but do not fasten off because that's where we're gonna pick up from this point then. So make sure you get your 18 inches of back and forth. You'll see that it's nice and thick and it's la lovely and let's continue from that point. So I've now finished my 18 inches. I told you that already. So you can try it on. Just kind of wrap it around your head. Make sure that it's feeling good. It's not too stretchy or like it's gonna start slipping on your head but make sure that you can get your head around it. Just add a few more uh, st uh, rows if you think you need more space because the matter is is that once we go around this the first time it's the same count for everybody. So um, it's just a matter how tight you wanna make this. When you're satisfied with the width of this or sorry with the length of 18 inches you're going to wanna turn your work and before I turn I wanna get into the back loop only. So just going into the back loop like I showed you. Okay let's just turn and I wanna grab into the front loop of this one here on the opposite side. And all I'm just going to do is slip stitch my way so that these two pieces can join. So pulling it through. So the back loop on the one side here, the front loop over here. Okay and you're gonna go all the way across and when you get all the way across you do not fasten off. We're going to then start and pick up the body of the hat immediately. So we're just gonna continue our strand across. So just match everything uh, and you will notice that the very first um, chain that you started with may be a little bit looser than what you finished. That's normal. Uh, it'll pull it all together by doing this. Make sure that when you do this that um, you're not being too tight about your slip stitching so it looks like it belongs together. And we're gonna ensure that this slip stitching that we're gonna do right now it forms a little ridge. We wanna for, uh, make sure that that goes on the inside of the hat before then starting the rest of the body. So we gotta make sure we turn it properly and then carry on from that point. Once you're in the very end here you're gonna match end to end on both sides. And then what I want you to do is that this ridge will be on the inside of the hat. So when you go to start this just flip this inside out so then the ridge kind of folds in inward like so and then you can continue then. And when you do that make sure that the yarn tail is not going through the center of this as well. And then we're gonna pick up and start our first round and get ourselves started and you will see everything is gonna look good. Now this uh, tail that I have that I started I'm gonna uh, put that underneath the first set of stitches and then that will be gone as well. So let's show you some tricks. I just folded it now. This is where we are starting. Folded it directly in half and I'm going to put a stitch marker on the top so it's gonna follow the top about halfway. Now all this is doing for me is that it's giving me a reference point so we have to get 70 stitches equally all the way around the top of this. So by putting it halfway you know that you need to get 35 stitches before you get to that point and 35 after. So um, usually if you don't do that and you get most of the way around and you realize that you only have just a few stitches left people tend to rush that so the hat ends up unbalanced. So my goal is is to make 35 stitches fit before the spot and 35 after. So let's uh, do that. We're going to start our first one and we're going to begin. So chain three does not count as a stitch at all in this particular one so make sure that you don't do that. So when you go to join it you wanna be the first double crochet. So chain three doesn't count as anything it's a builder and starting on the side 
just roughly guess it and you're gonna put in 35 before the chain or before the stitch marker. So one and just sticking it in the side, two and three four and five and I'll see you at the stitch marker and make sure we get our 35 in there before that point and then carry on. So I have five in there so the first chain three did not count as one. So that's five and let's continue. So I'm coming close to the stitch marker. I'm actually at 30. So I have to make sure I get 35. So another five in there before I get there. So one, two, just eye it up, three, four and then five is at the stitch marker. So there's 35 at the stitch marker and even though I've kinda had to jam it in there it'll work out you trust me. So then continuing after the stitch marker you need to get another 35 in there before you get to or by the time you get to around to all the way to the end you can also remove out your stitch marker too. So make sure you get that in there and I'll see you at the end of this round. So this is two so I'm coming all the way back around my neck, my 35 are in. When you go to join it, I want you to join to the top of the first double crochet, not the chain three and then that pulls it nice and tight. So then you end up with a nice tighter join. So now we have our total of 70 all the way around. So 35 to the halfway point and then another 35 to the other halfway point. And now let's continue and now we're gonna start the fun stuff in doing second round of the body of the hat. So let's begin our texture. Number two is our round. We're going to chain three does not count as anything so don't make sure that it does. So the other chain three is right under here. So starting in the very first post directly below you're going to do a front post um, double crochet. So wrap the hook and coming in the side of the post and double crochet. And now the next nine are all gonna be a back post. So wrap the hook and coming in the post from the behind and back to the behind and do nine in a row like that. So let's count that out. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So once those nine are in you're gonna repeat what you already know. So the next one is gonna be one front post double crochet and then the next nine are going to be back post double crochet. So I want you to do that all the way around. I'll see you at the end of round number two. When you get all the way back around the last nine are like that. If you happen to have an extra one I would do two together as a uh, double crochet. So put two together and if you are missing one I would put two um, back post double crochet in the same one. That's where you would fake it. So when you get all the way back around remember you're ignoring the chain three. Go right to the front post double crochet and join it and let's move on now to round number three. So now that we have these front posts uh, established you're now going to see the pattern start to materialize and it will be easier for you to be able to operate as well. So let's continue to round three. So let's go on to number three. We're gonna chain up three. Doesn't count as anything. And in the front post double crochet you're gonna keep that as a front post double crochet. So you're gonna keep that and then the next one here stitch you're gonna make that a front post double crochet. So wrapping and keeping that in the front. So that kind of pulls that forward and then the remaining eight that are left and here's the trick. This one here is where you, you do this again. So you don't need to keep as a visual count as like a you don't need to count as obsessively. So the next eight will take you to that spot. So you don't hear me counting because I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna watch the visual cues. I trust myself that the last round was accurate and once you get this established you'll see that happen too. So the first, uh, the, the eight are in and then you see the front post double crochet. So you're gonna make that front post double crochet another one and then you're gonna bring its friend right next door to be a front post double crochet and then the remaining ones here will continue to be a back post double crochet until you run into it again. So please do this all the way around. This is round number three. So I'm just coming all the way back around and I just finished the final back post double crochet. I want to attach it to the very beginning front post double crochet and continue again into round number four. Chain up three does not count as anything and watch the 
just materialize. So the first three will be a front post double crochet. So the first one, the second one that is already and then the third one is not there yet but you'll make it one, pull it forward and then you have the three. So then the remaining here will be a back post double crochet until you hit these again. So the one, two, three are front post double crochet and the re rest remain as a back post double crochet. You can hear me not counting it but if you need that count it is uh, currently it'll be what's it say? Seven back post double crochets if you need to know that. But I would actually just follow it visually and it should work out for you and you should be having a good day at this point. So let's continue then into round four and I'll see you at the end of this round. I'm coming up to the end of number four. I'm just going to attach it to the beginning front post double crochet and then start number five. Chain up three doesn't count as anything and then start in the front post double crochet. You wanna do four this time. So one, two, three and four and then the remaining of these will be back post double crochet until you hit this spot again and then you'll do four and then the remaining back post double crochet. Please do this round number five all the way around. I'm coming up to the end of round number five. I'm just going to join it to the beginning front post double. Now we're gonna start number six and chain three doesn't count as anything and so then the first five will each be a front post double. So one, two, three, four and then the fifth one gets pulled forward and then the remaining of these back post double crochets will stay back post double crochet and you'll do it again. So you'll have five in a row and then five in the back. Please do that all the way around number six and I'll see you at the end of this round. I'm coming up to the end of round number six. You're gonna join it. So we're gonna switch gears in here. So you notice that we've been kind of going up on an angle. So now we're gonna go up on an angle here and we're still gonna build it out. So it's actually pretty neat how it's gonna happen. So I've actually kind of filmed this all the way around and I realized that I hadn't done that correctly. So you know accidents happen. So chain three and the first one is gonna be a front post, uh, sorry it's gonna be a back post double crochet. So make that a back post double crochet instead. And then the next five in a row are each going to be a front post double crochet. So the remaining front post double crochet stay a front post double crochet and you have to just add its friend next door. Let me just get there. So the first four there are back post double or are front post double crochet. You're gonna add the one next door, bring it forward and now the next five will be a back post double crochet. So it'll be this one, this one, this one, this one plus this one here that you'll pull it back. And this will keep the alignment doing really good. Okay, so you get that there. The first one is a back post double crochet instead. So it pulls it now in behind and now the next five are each a front post double crochet and then the next five are back post double crochet. So just keep an eye on where you're doing this. So you'll just remember that the first one is a back post, the next five are front posts and then the rest are back posts and keep on doing that all the way around. So this is round number seven. I'm coming up to the end of round number seven. I'm just going to join it to the first back post double crochet. So we're gonna keep shifting in this direction off. So let's uh, continue then into round number eight. We're going to chain up three counts as nothing and in the first back post double crochet keep it as a back post double crochet and then add its friend next door as a back post double crochet. So just pull it backward. So everything is still in groups of five. So when you do this so you see these next four add the fifth one as a front post double crochet and then the next five are back posts and you wanna keep doing that all the way around. So just keep an eye on that and it's pretty easy at this point. So this is round number eight, just fives, everything's in sets of fives whether it's a front post or a back post and I'll see you at the end of round number eight. Coming up to the end of round number eight, let's just join it. So we're gonna continue to shift off to the side. So we're gonna chain up three, counts as nothing and so then the first three will be a back post double crochet. So the third one that you're doing is pulling that first one back. So everything is still in groups of five if you remember it that way. So once we get that established everything goes from fives from this point. So then the next four, uh, five, so there'll be all the front post double crochet. So these four plus this one pull forward and then it'll be five back posts and then five front posts and etc. So please do this all the way around for number nine. 
I'm coming up to the end of round number nine and I'm just going to slip stitch to the first back post double crochet. So you should notice that there's five back posts on this side of this chain three and then two on the, the other. So it gives you a grouping of five. So number ten we're going to continue to move up into the angle. So just chain three counts as nothing. And then the, the back post double crochet that we have. We're just gonna continue along. Okay, and this time there's gonna be four in a row. So we're gonna pull that first one back. That is a front post into the back side. And now it'll be five fives and five. So five front posts, five back posts and etc. And do this all the way around. And I will see you at the end of round number 10. As I come up to the end of number 10, I'm just going to join it to the first back post double crochet like so. So now we're gonna continue into round number 11 and it says that same as number six. So if you recall in number six we're gonna chain up three and we're gonna back, or sorry we're gonna do a, a double crochet front post around each of the next five stitches. So we're just gonna now start coming forward. So just do five, one, two, three, four, and five like so. And then the next five in a row will each be then a back post double crochet. So you can see that it's starting to have its um, angling changing. It's awesome. So this is how it's gonna work. And so you're gonna continue round number six. So once you get this first one that front post doubles for five, back post double for five and etc. Continue that around. This is round number 11. I'm coming to the end of round number 11. So I'm just going to slip stitch it to the first front post double crochet. So now we're gonna start uh, coming into the top of the hat. So we're gonna start doing the crown section next. Round number 12 we're gonna chain up three counts as nothing. So we're gonna do one front post double crochet around the next stitch. Okay which is the one directly below. And then it says skip the next stitch. So you're gonna skip the next one. And the next eight in a row are going to be a back post double crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Do you notice that that takes you to this section right here? So then this one st stays as a front post double crochet. You skip the next one and then the next eight in a row are back post double crochet. So if you can remember that it's pretty awesome. So you're gonna skip the first one out and just go to the next one and do back post double crochet for eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And you see the next one is a front post. So you're gonna keep that as a front post. You'll skip the next one after that and then the next eight in a row are back posts. Uh, double crochet. So you'll see this is gonna start eliminating stitches out. Coming up to the end of number 12 just join it to the front post double crochet. So number 13 we're gonna also start a reduction. So we're just gonna chain up three counts as nothing. And the first one right below it is a front post double crochet like we know it. The next one also is a front post double crochet. And then we're gonna skip the next one which is a back post and you're gonna continue to back post all the way until you get to this line right here which is the front post double crochet again. So just skip the next back post and back post the rest of them until you see that line. You can do all your counting if you want to but I'm very visual. Um, that's why I, I teach on YouTube because I'm a very visual person and I need to be shown. Um, so it's a challenge for me to read these patterns at times. I'm just keeping it real here. So once I get to that line the first two are a front post double. And then I skip the next one that is a back post. Skip that one and then the remaining back posts until you see that line again is going to be a back post double crochet. So this is number 13. Continue around please. So I'm coming up to the end of round number 13. I'm joining it to the front post double. So we're now gonna continue to decrease chain up three. And then you're going to put in a front post double crochet in the next three. So one, two and bring that next one forward three. And then the remaining back ones until you get to the spot here are going to be a back post. So you gotta skip one. So skip one and then the remaining is going to be a back post double crochet. So one, two, 
three and four. I don't know why I'm counting that because I'm looking for the visual. So then the next three are front posts. So one, two and bring that one forward. This is three and then skip the next one and make so skip it and then make the remaining a back post. This is round number 14. Please do this and I'll see you at the end of this round. I've come all the way back around. Just join it to the top of the front post double. So round number 15 we're also decreasing. So chain up three. Doesn't count as anything. And now the next four are each a front post double. So one, two, three and four. You're then going to skip the next stitch and back post double crochet the remaining until you get to that line that you're familiar with right there. So then once you get there it's the next uh, four in a row. So there are front posts of one, two, three and four. Okay skip the next one and then back post double crochet the remaining until you get to that ridge again. So please do this all the way around. This is number 15. We're getting close to the end. Coming up to the end of round number 15 you're just going to join it to the beginning and watch what we do. We are going to still uh, reduce so we're gonna chain three. This time you're only gonna stay within the front post uh, double crochets. There's a total of four of them only. So stay within those. So you're not gonna be shifting over at all on this particular one. It's getting close to the top of the hat. Skip the next one and then back post in the next one after that. And then start again. So the next four only. So one, two, three and four and then skip the next one and then just back post and then the next one after that. So please do this around for number 16. Coming up to the end of round number 16 just join it to the first front post double. Then we're gonna go and we're still gonna do a decrease so chain up three. So we're only gonna do a double crochet uh, back post around the first stitch. So just straight on down so double crochet back post just like that. And then all we're going to do, I keep saying that because I'm trying to buy myself some time. So the next three are a front post double crochet and then we skip the next one which is a back post and so the one after that we're going to make it a back post. So we're gonna pull it behind. So we're trying to keep authentic to the pattern here and then the next three in a row are each a front post. Okay so when you turn it you're gonna skip the next one and you'll make the one after that a back post. So pull it backward and then the next three are front post double crochet. So do this all the way around. This is number 17. So we're now finishing number 17. We're gonna join to the beginning. So this takes us to 18 the final round. We're gonna chain up three which won't count as anything and it says to skip the first stitch which is here. So then it says do one double crochet around the next two front posts. So we're gonna do front posts. So we're skipping the first one and we're doing a front post there for the next two. And then it says one double crochet back post around the next. Okay so then we skip the next stitch out and so then the next two after that are front post double crochet and then the next one is a back post and then we skipped this one here and keep on doing that. So two front posts, one back post and then skip. Please do this all the way around. So once you're done round number 18 that's it. So you're just gonna join to the first one that you did and then you have a wide open hole. So we're going to just cut this yarn a little bit longer and we're gonna use a tapestry needle to feed this through and to close it off. So let's just pull that through and then we're gonna find a tapestry needle here on the table somewhere. Once you have this strand on a tapestry needle all you're just going to do is go in and out of the top area and then once you go all the way around just pull it and it will close it shut and then you can add a pom pom. For a complete disclaimer I've almost run out of yarn so I will need a second ball to make my pom pom and I'll be doing that 
as well. So I'm going to leave that pom pom with you to be able to do that. You can use a pom pom maker, you can use your hands. We have tutorials available right here on Yarn Inspirations as well as the Crochet Crowd to be able to make a pom pom if you wish as well. I find the tools pretty cool uh, but if you don't have access to that cardboard or your hands is just fine. So let me just uh, get all the way around and pull this shut. Once you've gone all the way around and just pull it shut and that should close off the top. What I prefer to do myself is that once I do pull it shut I take the end and I go directly do, uh, across to where it should be across and then that kind of whip stitches it shut and closes in the hole so there should be no hole. So just go down through the center and then just pop your hand just be very careful with that through to the bottom side and let's look at the inside of this hat here. So I would just take it in a few strands here on the underside. In the more information of this video I'm going to leave you the pom pom making stuff if you would like to do that as well while I'm trying to buy myself time <laughs> getting my needle in. So once you're happy with it just uh, secure it with a little knot and then leave it on the inside. If you are gonna do a pom pom I'd recommend that you have a pom pom and you leave extra ties so you just tie it in a bow tie on the inside of the hat and therefore if you ever have to wash the hat you just untie it uh, take it off and then you can toss this in the wash machine. With this particular yarn this is the Red Heart Heat Wave. You can wash it. It doesn't wash out the properties for the heat, the self heating and that's pretty neat. So when you look at it from this perspective there is your hat. You have your ridges and your texture and it's pretty amazing. So until next time there is your seam so you just wear it in the back and it's quite awesome right? Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pom pom with a pom pom maker that you may find in a store. I picked this one up here in Walmart and I know that they're in uh, major craft stores across North America as well. So what this is is that there's different sizes of uh, pom pom makers. This particular kit came with all four sizes and they when you open them up you realize that you think that they're broken because they're separate units like this but in actual fact you have to have them separated in order to do it. So some people use uh, for pom-poms. They use cardboard or they could use their hand in order to make pom-poms. These have to, I have to say, they make one of the most perfect uh, pom-poms you'll ever see. So today I'm going to show you how to operate these and it's the same operation for all sizes and I will show you how to do that. So let's begin to show you. So just put the two sides, okay. The outside hinge is going to be toward the outside and the other one is to on the other side. Okay, match it up. Use the divots to hold just like you see here and just kind of pin it together. So you're going to do it in a way that is going to just hold it together as you do it. Okay, so it's just gonna be good and uh, they don't need to match each other up there. It's just as long as you're pinching here and it holds it and it just, it's just lightly holding it. Once you start wrapping it, it'll stick together without you having to hold it uh, really quite tightly. So it's just a matter of starting this and getting it wrapped around a few times. So I'm gonna use my left hand to wrap and all I wanna do is fill in the space on this whole half side. So I'm not gonna jump over to the other side as of yet and I just want to continue to wrap. So I'm gonna go right up to this edge and I'm gonna go right up to this edge. Now you can either count it out if you want to if you would like to be really super super accurate uh, with your counting so that it's equal on both sides of this tool or what you can just do is just wrap it and make it look like it works. Okay, so because this is variegated I'm kinda just jumping around a little bit and what I wanna do is I wanna continue to wrap now and as you get more and more it just sticks together on its own. So once you're satisfied with it now you can just cut your yarn. So now I'm gonna jump to the other side and pinning those two other two together. I'm gonna do the same thing and just start it and wrap again like I did the other side. So continue to wrap this side and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay once you're satisfied with it all you just gotta do is trim this other yarn. So what you wanna do now at this point is that you want to close this contraption. So just close it and also open up these clips and they are locking on to its neighbor but not uh, opposite to each other. So just close it. So just lock it and lock the other side. So now the entire ring is now uh, full and now we're going to then separate these and being able to make the pom pom. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to grab our scissors next. 
So with the space that is existing in between just like you see here we're gonna run our scissors through and we're just gonna start on one side and work our way to the other side. So just going right directly in half okay and we are just gonna gently cut okay just do a few at a time if your scissors can't handle it and you do not wanna let this ring go. Everything is being held into place as you're, you're doing it. Now the size of your pom pom is varied on the size of this ring but also how many times you wrap it as well. And you go right to the end. So you wanna physically see this gap as you go. So now you're gonna go back to the other side. Do not let this fall apart on you. Again holding everything together and you're gonna do the other side now. There's nothing holding these rings together so you kinda wanna hold on to it at that point. So right now I'm about to hold which I already am and I go right to the end. So now the rings are actually completely separated from each other but then it's still in the inside. So just gently put it down and I need you to grab enough strand. Now if this material is not strong enough to be tied then you gotta use a different material in order to do the tie in the middle. So what I'd recommend for you is that grabbing the same amount of yarn you're gonna wanna tie about two, three, or four, or five times in the middle in order to really get it to, to separate or to get it to really be tight. So just grabbing your yarn and what I like to do is that I like to use a, a, an extra um, strand of string as I'm being able to tie it to my project. So just slipping in between the two gaps, the gap spaces as you see here and you can turn it around and just bring it to the other side. Again being gentle about it and just bring it through. And do you see the hinging here? There is a space so the yarn will go in between that too. And you just wanna pull it through. And so just you start to tie your little knot here. So just let's do that. So let's just put that through and really give it a good tug. And this is going on the inside of this. Pull it enough so that it's gonna form it but don't pull it enough that it's gonna ruin it. So then I'm gonna go to the other side now, turn it over and I'm gonna tie this side. So see how I just tied the other side. Now I'm gonna come to this side and tie this side and I wanna do that a few times. So I'm gonna use these two strands that are falling out as my tie strands to go to the project. So I wanna keep those and I don't wanna damage these strings. So when I go to work with this I'll leave them out. So I'm gonna tie one more time and then we're gonna release this pom pom from the tool. Okay so there's my strand. So now I'm just gonna hold it by those two strands. So now I can open up the tool by just releasing this, these clamps on both sides. So they're on both sides of the work here. And all I can do is to open it up now and it will release the pom pom. So there's one out. And here's the other one coming out in a second. And there is my pom pom. So now holding it by the two strings so you don't accidentally cut it. Now you just fluff it up. Okay, look how perfect that is. It looks nice and full. And you're just gonna take your scissors then and just any ones that are just abnormally long or just didn't sit right or just kinda looks like it's not working well. Then you're just gonna safely just trim it like this in order to form the pom pom like so. And give it a good shake and look at it and that's how you would create a pom pom with that. So take this other than string strands that are here and you can attach it to the top of a hat really quite easily and that's how you use all these kind of little tools. So the size of the tool uh, then gives you the size of the pom pom. So if you look at it from this point of view, see this pom pom? It kind of matches that. So if you're looking for a bigger pom pom, you can use a bigger tool like so. You'll have a much bigger and if you want smaller then you just use a smaller like so. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Your Inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. Enjoy and hopefully enjoy your new pom pom. We'll see you again real soon. Bye.